Yeah, I'm gonna Instagram that shit. <laughs> oh, hi, sorry, I didn't see you there. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Say, are you coming to Iceland? Well, you better, because there is nothing that beats the breathtaking, gorgeous landscape that is so beautiful. At the end of your trip, you will be on your knees begging to become an Icelandic citizen. This place is so magnificent, Hollywood has even decided to film dozens of B-movies here starring burned out actors who all seem to get divorced every time they come to Iceland. But you're probably asking yourself, what can I expect when I show up in your utopia of a paradise? Well, a lot of things. Let's start at the beginning. After spending several hours on board one of our overpriced airlines reading patriotic advertisements while munching on a $10 microwave oven sandwich, you'll arrive here, Keflavik International Airport. Now, assuming the airport staff is not on strike, you'll be able to purchase things here like alcohol at normal prices before getting your wallet executed ice style by one of our state-run liquor stores. Upon arriving at Keflavik International Airport, one of the first things you will notice is that you are not in Reykjavik. This means that since there is no Uber in Iceland, you can either shell out 100 euros for a taxi, or do the cheaper method and just take the airport bus into town. Being Icelandic means that I am always on a budget, so let's take the airport bus. This is the BSI bus terminal, Iceland's Grand Central Station, the country's Hoppanhof, a majestic hub of transportation like no other. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> One of the things you'll have to take into account when you come to Iceland is transportation. One of your options will be that you can rent a car here. However, if you do decide to rent a car in Iceland, make sure you have at least 5,000 euros ready in order to pay for damages you had nothing to do with. Or if you are a poor college hipster student, like 90% of Iceland's tourists, you can just walk right into town. Reykjavik is the capital of Iceland and the only city in the entire country. Uh, it bears many names, uh, capital of the north, hipster central, and according to your boarding pass, KEF. Now Reykjavik is known for a lot of different things. First of all, it's outstanding transportation system. It's fine restaurants. And of course, it's many, many misspelled signs. Now, Reykjavik is a wonderful city, but like all cities, there are certain places that are not so tourist friendly. These places include uh, tacky overpriced tourist shops, Björk's basement, and this prison I'm standing next to. But don't worry, the people of Iceland are extremely friendly. <laughs> Just kidding, we're assholes. Hey! If our brute Viking nature has taught us anything, it's to not trust anyone, especially other Icelanders, overreact, and always solve every problem with violence. If you're interested in learning more about the social behavior of Icelanders, this street offers a fantastic show every Friday and Saturday between midnight and 6 a.m. In fact, many of the bathroom stalls on this bar street are where most Icelanders were conceived. A must-see here in Iceland is the Golden Circle, a tour that covers Thingvelli National Park, Geysir and Gullfoss Waterfall. Beautiful places to see. However, make sure to bring a little extra cash with you, as an entrance fee may or may not apply. This is Thingvellir National Park, a national treasure which is most famous for the area where the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates meet. However, it is also the area where over a thousand years ago a group of drunk Viking chieftains realized that instead of slaughtering each other, they were actually adults who could use words to solve their problems. This was the birth of the Icelandic parliament, a gigantic mistake Icelanders regret even to this day. Iceland produces more bananas than any other western country. In Iceland, however, we grow them inside and we use the language of Björk to make the bananas grow. Whoa. Cool, huh? We're here at Geysir. Well, technically Geysir. 
technology. Geysir, the actual one, stopped erupting around 2000 after tour guides kept throwing soap in it to make it erupt on demand. Icelanders don't really have a lot of patience. So now instead we get Geysir's illegitimate stepchild Strokkur to erupt instead. Uh, in March 2014, a 600 krona entrance fee was placed onto the area after the water molecules decided that they were tired of working for free. That decision was later repealed by the government, so now you can come here for free. But don't worry, in Iceland there are always plenty of places that are more than willing to rob you blind, especially if you're staying at Hotel Atam. Air in a can. This is Gullfoss waterfall, an amazing spectacle of nature that is responsible for over half of Iceland's postcard sales, which is about 60% of the country's GDP. Uh, in the early 20th century, the Icelandic government was hell-bent on building a dam here to generate electricity, a testament to how much Icelanders truly appreciate their country's beauty. Now, these are just some of the things to see here in Iceland, but you may be asking yourself, what is there to do? Well, first of all, stop asking so many questions. And secondly, there's plenty of things to do here. For example, you can go on a whale watching tour. Or let's say perhaps you would like to go see the Aurora Borealis on one of our Northern Lights safari. <laughs> Of course, if you have money, you can always take out that third mortgage and spend your life savings at a glorified swimming pool known as the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> if none of these things tickle your fancy, you can always just do what the Icelanders do and get blackout drunk. Beer was illegal in Iceland until 1989, out of fear that the Icelanders would be drunk on a daily basis. In order to prevent this from happening, the government finally decided to make beer illegal, but about as expensive to buy as gold. Now, Icelanders primarily drink on the weekends, a spectacle you are sure to witness, as their drinking looks like a group of Somali refugees attacking a UN food truck. Being hungover in Iceland is a great opportunity to try some of the local cuisine. A fun trick Icelanders like to play on foreigners is to convince them that the national dish in Iceland is sheep's head, fermented shark and a shot of brennivin. In reality, most Icelanders would rather have their tongues ripped out rectally before eating any of that. <laughs> if you want to try something truly Icelandic, I recommend either hot dogs, Domino's pizza or Subway sandwiches. Well, I hope this video has shown you that Iceland is in fact the greatest gift mankind has ever received and that the people who live here truly are God's chosen people. Before I bid you farewell and let you get back to your packing, I just want to go over a few things to bear in mind during your stay here in Iceland. First of all, Icelanders are extremely self-conscious about their country. Make sure to keep reassuring them how beautiful Iceland is and how cute it is that they still believe in elves. Also, don't forget that volcanoes can erupt at any moment and should that happen, feel free to go ahead and blame the locals. After all, volcanoes are just God's punishment for allowing Icelandic bankers to exist. Well, that about covers it. I do hope you enjoy your stay here in Iceland, uh, which is the most beautiful country in the world that will definitely have you crying like an infant when you board Iceland there and go back to whatever undeveloped sinkhole it is you came from. Let's bless! Bless!